Juvelin is a perfect example of just how good a family thrill coaster can be. With a height of only 40 feet, this intimate straddle coaster rarely ever gets high off the ground. It instead utilizes quick tire propelled launches and a series of fast paced transitions. The ride made its debut at Jurs Summerland in Denmark in 2013 and has since seen one other version open up over in France at La Paul. It's called Yukon Quad. It is a mirror image that debuted in 2018. And this really marked a new era for Intamin family launch coasters. Since Juvelin's debut, we've seen Wavebreaker over at SeaWorld San Antonio, Dark Coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, not too far down the road from Yukon Quad is a roller coaster called Namazu at Volcania. All these are really fun additions. Ironically though, I would say none of them are as good as Juvelin is. And that's because while this is absolutely a family thrill coaster, it does lean a bit more towards the thrilling side than some of those other additions. A ride like Wavebreaker is very tame. For those who are familiar with Jet Rescue at SeaWorld Australia, that was actually the first of Intamin's modern day straddle coasters. It made its debut all the way back in 2008, so it wouldn't be another five years until we saw Juvelin, but it felt like they took Jet Rescue and just elongated it. You know, my biggest complaint with Jet Rescue is that it was just short. This is a nice, long experience, 3,280 feet of track, and from my understanding, it has been a huge hit with audiences. So let's talk about what makes this ride experience work so well. And for this, I will be talking about both Juvelin and Yukon Quad because they are essentially the same ride, just again, mirror images of each other. Honestly, the biggest difference between them is just the thematics that the individual parks have set up. Juvelin in Danish means jewel. It's in this big Aztec looking temple with this amazing queue, some really nice details, Meanwhile, Yukon Quad is over in a Canadian section of La Paul. Not quite as well themed, but one thing I did really appreciate about Yukon Quad is there are actually some really nice overlooks where you could see the full attraction out in front of you. Juvelin is tucked behind a barrier where really the only part of the ride that you can actually see is the first launch. So in a way, that makes it more of a surprise when you actually go to experience it. But for those of us who like taking photos, Yukon Quad definitely delivered on that end. Now, when you go to board this vehicle, there are nine cars per train with each row set up as two different ATVs. So you mount it like you would a four-wheeler. You can hold on to the handlebars out in front of you. You pull down your lap bar. It really does a nice job of mimicking that feeling you get of going over harsh terrain. The only difference is this is a nice and smooth experience. If you've gone four-wheeling, you know it can be a little bumpy. Now for both coasters, when you roll out of the station, you'll approach this indoor show scene. In the case of Juvelin, there are some large imposing statues on either side. For Yukon Quad, you're in this log cabin with a series of flashing lights, fog effects, and then boom, you take off. This layout features a max speed of about 56 miles per hour. I don't believe that that top speed is reached here at this first launch. I think this is more about like 40 miles per hour. You'll see this coaster builds on itself. It has a great first like third of the ride, but really it's a warm up. The middle section surprisingly is where this ride shines. There's a lot of rides out there that use tires to build momentum where it's just kind of underwhelming. And honestly, I'd even say that's the case for some of Intamin's other straddle coasters such as Wavebreaker. But this ride has an awesome beginning. So let's walk through this POV. And for this, I will be using Juvelin as the reference point because it was the original. From this launch, you bank sharply to the right-hand side. You're only a couple of feet off the ground and then you'll gradually build up to your highest point. It's an airtime peak, which at its core, this is not an airtime centric experience. It is way more about like the whippy fast paced turns. It's like you might get a little bit of floater air here, but I would actually argue that the airtime hills on this layout is one of its weaker points. I didn't mind this first hill, but later on you'll see I actually think that airtime hills bring the ride down as opposed to making it better. So you'll gradually slope downwards and take this long drawn out left hand turn around. It rises up in elevation at one point and then switches sharply to the right and then again to the left and then back to the right for your second launch. This I believe is where you hit your top speed or at least it certainly feels that way. This is the start of that middle section that I was talking about earlier. Juvelin and Yukon Quad kick it into high gear and it is freaking insane. There's a sharp left hand turn then you'll immediately switch to the right back to the left left, a more drawn out turn, flip over to the right, then back to the left. It's just wrapping around this sea of track. You have no idea what is coming next. You'll level out a bit, drop down, bank again to the right. And then this is the finale that is easily the weakest part of the ride. You have two long drawn out hills that really kill 
all that speed. As far as I'm concerned, it is this ending that is keeping this ride from being considered perfect in my eyes. And actually, Intamin is aware of its weak spots, and they've come out with a Juvalin 2.0 redesign for any park that wants to pick one up. They replaced that ending with more of those maneuvers that they know they do best. They threw in a wave turn, some nice banked bunny hops, more quick transitions, and I think that it just absolutely rounds out the experience. I think any mid-sized park would benefit from a ride like Juvalin. And I love that we're starting to see more Intamin straddle coasters pop up. Those custom layouts are fun, but I definitely love to see a park one day invest in a new version of this ride because it really is so good. In my opinion, this is one of the most underrated layouts in Europe. The middle section of this ride frankly reminded me of Intimidator 305 or Maverick. The feeling of just riding on a quad right up against the ground makes it feel like you're going a lot faster than you actually are. Snapping from one side to the other is just so fun. It's not uncomfortable at all. I think kids are going to really enjoy this experience. Any park that's maybe tight on a budget, can't afford a custom design, has this flat section of ground, they want to put in something that they'll draw in the crowds. I really do think this is their ride. So for Juvalin and Yukon Quad's final scores, I am giving it a 9 out of 10 for reasons I already stated. Just a little bit of a lackluster ending, but the first two thirds are literally just like perfect. To me, it shows the full potential of what a straddle coaster can be. So if you got off Wavebreaker and you were underwhelmed and you think that that's what all Intamin straddle coasters are like, don't worry, they're not. But as of right now, if you want to experience them, you got to head down to Southern France or Northern Denmark and go check them out. So let me know down in the comments below if you've had the opportunity to experience Juvalin at Jur Summerland or Yukon Quad at La Paul. If you agree with the points that I brought up and of course stay tuned for more reviews here at Coaster Studios and I'll see you next time.